here's a segment from a recent Gun Talk radio episode. You can listen to all the Gun Talk radio podcasts however you tune in, or check out guntalk.com for more. All right, fabulous. Congressman Steve Scalise joins us right now, Minority Whip. Congressman, thank you so much for taking just a little bit of time out of your day. Tom, great to be back with you. Absolutely. Uh, I don't know if you have... uh, Probably may not have noted it because you're a very busy man, but we're coming up on the fifth anniversary of uh, you being shot, uh, attempted assassination of several Republicans out there. And a lot of people in the media were surprised when you didn't turn around and immediately endorse gun control. You want to explain that? Yeah, you know, Tom, it was odd when I was I was asked about this a few times. I know I did Chuck Todd's show on Meet the Press, and that was the first question they had asked. And, and I said, well, first of all, my Beliefs in the Second Amendment are rooted in, in my core values and the, the values of the country and why the Second Amendment, really the, the founders felt they didn't even need to put a protection for guns in the Constitution because they thought it was an assumed right. And then later attacks came on the Second Amendment and it was added in in the Bill of Rights. And I said, well, you know, first of all, it's guys with guns who saved my life. If the shooter was the only person that had a gun, I would not be here right now. And, mm. and how many times a day do we see a gun used to save lives? And it's never reported. You know, just last week in West Virginia, there was what would have been one of the lead stories of the country for days. Uh, a guy tried to shoot up a party of young kids, and there was a woman there with a concealed carry permit handgun. And she used the handgun to take down the shooter who had a rifle. And, and he, he, she killed him. Now, Absolutely. what if she didn't have a gun? And some of my colleagues in Washington don't believe in concealed carry permits and think it's wild, wild west. Well, by the way, the, the guy that had the gun that was trying to kill everybody, he was mm-hmm. a felon who's not legally allowed today to have a gun. So when they talk yep. about all these laws, we need more laws, there's hundreds of laws on the books. Criminals don't follow the laws. Law-abiding citizens are buying guns at record numbers because of the lawlessness out there whether it's defund the police, this crazy movement, or these DAs who aren't even putting criminals in jail. People are buying guns to protect themselves and their family. And I benefited from people with guns that were able to save me because they're good guys with guns. And and so, no, my my view is only hardened because I I understand there are bad people that are out there, and and it's knives, it's guns, it's bombs, whatever they're going to use. We've got to be more vigilant in trying to stop them before they do it not trying to go after the weapon of choice for whatever it is today, because mm-hmm. millions of law-abiding citizens are going to be hurt uh, in the process. If you would, give us a peek behind the curtain, because I know there's a lot of intense discussions going on in Congress right now with a lot of folks uh, on the Democrat side wanting to pass you know, their whole shopping list of gun control laws. And yet I, I sense that a lot of people in the country are looking at this and going, you do understand that these guys are all breaking the law anyway. What's going on? What are the conversations and what are we likely to see coming out of all this? Yeah, you know, and look, in the aftersh- aftermath of any mass shooting, you know, my first thoughts are praying for the families, the victims. Uh, there are people in hospitals still struggling for their life. I was there. I I, I needed those prayers that people were giving from all across the country uh, to, to, to pray for me to, to make it through the day, and I did, thank God. But right, right now what you get on the left is, as soon as there's a shooting like Uvalde, they're not talking about praying for the victims, they're talking about promoting their gun control agenda. And, and it really gets annoying because the bills that they were talking about in the, the day of the shooting had nothing to do with the shooter. You know, mm-hmm. H.R. 8 was their bill of the day that they were saying, okay, there's a mass shooting. We need to pass H.R. 8. We'll go read H.R. 8. It would have had absolutely no effect. Would have made it harder for you to loan your neighbor a gun if she's afraid that her ex-boyfriend is going to come and beat her up that night. And you loan her your gun and she uses it to defend herself. You're, you're now a felon under H.R. 8. So hmm. H.R. 8 is not the answer. But that was what they were saying in the day of the shooting. Uh, instead of praying for the victims, praying and trying to find out the facts. Let's get the facts. Let's see if there are things we can do to prevent these shootings and other violent incidents before they happen. We had this approach after 9-11, where we said we need to be more vigilant about connecting the dots. We didn't ban airplanes. We got a lot smarter about connecting dots, and we prevented future attacks, thank God. 
Right. Uh, I, I think we can do the same thing if we put our minds to it. But right now, the left immediately goes to taking away your guns as their answer. Joe Biden the other day talked about taking away handguns. He wants to go after the nine millimeter handgun. So I know. It kind of exposes what their real thoughts are. It's not about well, stopping. It, it, it does. What, I mean, what, it's, what it's, the it, problem it, is. Every time he talks, he's, it's like he includes yet more guns he would like to ban. And then when he says, you know, the 9 millimeter will blow a lung out of a body, you're going, okay, number one, he doesn't know what he's talking about. But number two, as well, you yeah. said, it kind of exposes the lie where they keep telling us, well, nobody wants to take your guns. And at the same breath, they say, but here's a whole list of guns we want to take away. Yeah, and then the list keeps growing. <laughs> it's, a, exactly. it's a never-ending list because, you know, we saw this, I mean, Geez, in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, I was a state rep back then, and they had sent police door to door confiscating people's guns. It actually happened in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. I passed a bill mm -hmm. in Louisiana to prohibit anybody from ever being able to do that again in our state. And then ultimately, uh, groups like the NRA and Gun Owners of America went and got a national law passed to do the same thing. But, but I watched it happen. They went door to door. And there, and there was no 911, by the way. For days, you didn't even have power in your house. Right. And so you in your house with your gun was your only line of defense. And when they came and tried to take people's guns, it was shocking. Uh, but it really did happen. And and that's where they want to go with this. Exactly. So, all right, you're, you're the minority whip, but we've got midterm elections coming up. How are we looking for this? Well, Tom, the, the midterm elections, I wish they were coming up tomorrow. Uh, because people are angry about this far left socialist agenda that Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, all the leftists running Washington right now, you know, look at what they've done with massive spending, with massive regulations, uh, driving up inflation, gas prices over four dollars and 80 cents a gallon because Joe Biden shut down American energy. He's going to go to mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia and beg OPEC to produce <sighs> more oil. He allowed Putin to have more leverage over Europe and America by shutting down America's pipeline and yet greenlighting Putin's pipeline, and now we're more dependent on Russian oil. Why don't we just tur turn away from the dictators and say yes to American energy? Uh, people are fed up with all the things that they've been seeing from this administration, and, and they're paying for it every day when they go to the grocery store, when they fill up their tank, uh, crime in the streets. You're looking at foreign policy debacles, all of this. It's, it's, I, I, look, I think we're going to have a huge election wave where people say enough is enough of these big government socialists, and I think we're going to win a big majority. My only thought is that uh, for those who are thinking, yeah, we're going to win big, is it make sure that you're registered to vote and then you get out to vote because you can't just expect everybody else to do it for you. Well, that's a great point, Tom, because there's going to be, I think, a large turnout this election. But if, if you're one of those people that just thinks, let somebody else go take care of it, you can't sit on the sidelines. You know, people see what's going on. They're angry, uh, but they can do something about it. Mm -hmm. They can at least flip the House, flip the Senate. I do think the Senate's going to flip with the House, but it's going to oh. take everybody getting up and going and voting against all these big government socialists who are voting for all these radical policies. And, and then let's at least put a stop to the madness and then focus after that on 2024 to get a, a president, a Republican president that actually wants to turn this thing around. There you go. Congressman Steve Scalise, thank you so much for letting us interrupt your Sunday. No problem. Always great to be with you, Tom. God bless. All right. All right. You take care.